Okay, chapter three, one more time. This time with those factors that shifted the entire supply curve. We've got six of them, just like with the demand curve, and if some of them look familiar, if you're thinking that, geez, weren't some of them on the list with the supply curve and the demand curve? You're right, they were. Related goods, cost of inputs, technology, weather, expectations, and number of sellers. The first two are the most complex, so we'll talk about those first. Substitutes in supply and complements in supply. It's going to sound kind of familiar, just like with the demand curve. Now, in my example here for substitutes, I've got price of wheat and the supply of corn, because farmers can decide how much wheat, how much corn they're going to supply in a given growing season. And we say that these two particular products are substitutes in supply, because a farmer might, for example, decide when they hear that the price of wheat is expected to go up or is going up, to supply a little bit more wheat and a little less corn. So an increase in the price of wheat causes the supply of corn to shift to the left. That leftward shift is a decrease. Wheat's a better deal to produce right now and sell. So instead of producing quite so much corn, the farmer is going to switch or substitute away from producing corn and produce a little bit more wheat instead. That change in the price of wheat causes that shift in the supply of corn to the left. Now complements. Complements are sometimes also called joint products in economics. Beef and leather are complements in supply. If the price of beef is going up, that's going to cause ranchers to kind of look and say, you know, maybe I better take some of these cows that I've been, been raising to the, the slaughterhouse and earn those higher prices of beef. So that increase in the price of beef is going to produce a lot more cows going to slaughter and a lot more hides that are available to tan, that's going to cause an increase in the supply of leather. So beef goes up in price, the rancher takes more cows to market, that produces more beef to sell, but it also produces an increase in supply of hides and thus an increase in supply of leather. So beef and leather are joint products or complements in supply. Now one little note, when you're thinking about substitutes and complements, substitutes and complements in demand, substitutes and complements in supply are easy to get kind of mixed up. The way to think about it is whether you're thinking about it from the seller's point of view, like here, supply, complements, and substitutes, or from the buyer's point of view, that is, substitutes and complements in supply, in demand. Next is cost of inputs. Now, cost has pretty straightforward effect on supply. An increase in the cost of inputs will shift the supply curve to the left, cause it to decrease. A drop in costs will cause the supply curve to shift to the right. The costs that we're talking about are those costs that the producer is going to have to incur to produce their product. For United States producers, the two biggest ones tend to be labor costs. So we could think here about the cost of benefits going up or the cost of wages rising. The other big cost is energy, an increase in the price of gasoline, electricity, diesel, jet fuel, those sorts of things. Those are the two biggest factors here, the ones that are quite variable. But any cost change can do this. So cost of inputs is the second one. Okay, the third one, technology. A change in technology will change the price for every amount that a producer is able to produce. And so it's going to shift the entire curve to the right or to the left. In our lifetimes, the biggest change in technology has been computer technology, which has affected, well, first it started in accounting and in the business offices and firms, and now it's everywhere from communication to the factory floor. So a change in technology almost always shifts the supply curve to the right. Next is the weather, and that's kind of an easy one. You can see pretty easily how, especially for things like agricultural products, a change in the weather can affect strongly how much corn, how much wheat is produced in a particular season. But it's not just agricultural products. For example, construction. The construction industry is very sensitive to changes in the weather. Expectations as well will affect supply. If a producer expects that a market is going to be particularly thin or strong for a particular good, they might decide to supply more or less. And the last one is the number of sellers. When a good, for example, first comes onto the market, you can think of some of the electronic devices that you've enjoyed over the last 5 to 10 to 15 years. When they're just developed, like high-definition televisions, there might be only one or two suppliers in the market. As 
the good kind of catches fire and people start to buy it and, and desire more of them, the number of sellers will grow and the number of goods available at every price will change. So the supply curve can shift to the right as the number of sellers increase as well. So six factors that affect the supply curve. Related goods, cost of inputs, technology, weather, expectations, and the numbers of sellers in the market.